Hey everyone, it's Johnny from Johnny Custom Glocks here. And it's a long awaited video that I've been uh, telling everyone via email and stuff that I was going to put out on uh, Striker and Striker engagement and some of the things you can do to enhance the uh, Johnny Glocks, Johnny Boss kits that you guys have. Um, even though I do offer a um, it's sort of like a, I won't call it an upgrade, but it's a $50 striker part that I can work the striker after a conversation with you depending on what kind of break feel you want and uh, what type of shooting discipline or what kind of games you're doing. Um, this is another option that you have that you can do the work yourself if you feel confident with that kind of, um, with, 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 the, with your ability to do the work. If you feel at all not confident to do it, don't do it because it's, it's just not worth it, you know, take it to a gunsmith or myself and, uh, you know, let them do it for you. The, the worst thing to have out there is an unsafe gun. So basically, we're going to break this down into, because it could be very long, so we're going to break it down into a couple shorter videos. And the first one's going to kind of be on uh, the relationships of why you would even want to work your striker lug face and how that, in relationship with the sear, it all functions as a cohesive unit. Um, so I have a couple drawings that I just finished up right here. They're they're uh, they're, they're pretty basic, and they're, they're all showing different angles and stuff of what would be your striker, which is this part right here. And so that, as you can see, is this. And what is your sear? At the end of the day, the sear in this system is actually that very top part right there which is reflected with that picture. So basically you can stone, and I'm going to set this here just so because I can refer back and forth to it, you can stone certain parts to get break feels that you're looking for um, when you're talking uh, at 90 degree to 90 degree angles, a lot of people like when they use the word crisp, they like a crisp break feel. Um, that means that that striker angle is at 90 degrees and that that sear angle is at 90 degrees. So when they actually, when it actually, the trigger actually breaks on this system, you have a nice tactical crisp chink. Uh, the other option is a rolling break when you hear that type of terminology. That type of terminology is more based for like a, maybe a bullseye shooter. Um, guys that, this is really reflected in my range and target level two model. It's standard a rolling break because when someone's sitting there like on a rest, really concentrating whether it's a 10 or 25 yards or even 50 yards, and they really want to start getting their groups tight, uh, and that's the kind of mentality they have and they want to have fun doing that, that's what floats their boats, then they want to have, you know, they want to snug up against the wall and as that last bit of travel comes out of the system, it's just going to elegantly roll off of the striker lug face. And that can be achieved by kind of, um, you know, if you look in this picture, it's almost this rounding off right here of, of the sear. You can achieve that kind of feel. Also, um, you know, with this with this picture right here, when anything's kind of rounded, it kind of goes to hand in hand with the rolling break. Uh, when when things are angled, that goes along with the tactical what they call it, a wall break. Um, so those are the different the two major types of breaks, and there's a bunch of different variations in between. Now, when we look at this picture uh, with the striker fire system, when you take all the pre-travel out, especially with the Glock, it's considered a double action only because when the first part of it is this is actually, and I can show you in this slide right here, the first part of the movement, I'll take this down now, the first part of the movement when, you're, when, you're, when you engage the trigger is this sliding back. So you're actually pre-caulking it as it starts to as the, as the transfer bar starts to push backwards, you are transferring the energy into this. So this is part one of the double action. This is the first part of the double action. The second part is that, where it slides off. So that's why it's considered a double action trigger. Um, with the Johnny Glock system, when you take the majority of the pre-travel out, you're actually sort of like in a pre-caulk position. So you have, 
it, the spring loaded to an extent back here like this. So with all the pre-travel taken out, you're sitting at what's called the predictable wall. At that predictable wall, you can either have that rolling break happen or that wall break happen. Um, some of the some of the important things to know that a lot of people try to do is they mess with the engagement of the sear to what they, what's called the striker lug face. Um, and the, the pictures are pretty evident right there of, of what's going on. But if you have the sear, and this is what we talk about in my system that adds to 100% confidence, if you have that sear so far down on the striker that if that gun would drop, this part right here is going to engage and go off. How you doing? How's it going? 